Yeah, it is. like for themes and I can narrow so, it down. Um, I was looking at the that he gave this Oh yeah. Faithful foods, yeah. Uh, well, maybe something in there. Well so if you like that style, that arranger has four books. Oh. So I have four. Oh okay. so I can send you the
In the name of Jesus Christ, welcome all to worship on this fourth Sunday in the season of Lent, a season of preparation for the celebration of the festival of the resurrection of our Lord, a season marked by prayer, by almsgiving, by loving acts of service and fasting. But this day marked as we gather together once again to meet the risen Christ in word and song, fellowship and prayer. And in this meeting, as we say, may you be blessed to be a blessing in the week to come. A special word of welcome to those viewing online and to those visiting here for the first time. It is a blessing to have you joining us and to be in our midst. We do invite uh, visitors here to fill out the card, uh, visitor card in the pew and place it in the offering plate um, as it goes by. Or if you are viewing online for the first time, just send us an email so we may continue our welcome of you in the week to come. Uh, following worship today, there is a time of fellowship out in the narthex, and there is a bake sale happening today. Um, and the proceeds of that bake sale are going towards um, the quilt ministry of Gloria Day Lutheran Church, evidence of which you see before you today. This is National Quilt Day, and um, we are marking and honoring this day. Um, by sharing visually some of the quilts that um, our quilters have been working on over the past year and which will be shared with the Lutheran World Relief. Um, and I'm going to say more about this in just a little bit, uh, but these quilts are for Lutheran World Relief and some also for the Hospice of the Chesapeake. Uh, we share quilts with them as well. But again, I'll say more about that, but that is why you see quilts before you. Um, so uh, we will be celebrating that ministry this day. Um, and as you have some uh, snacks and fellowship uh, following that, um, Mr. Mo and I will be gathering folks who are interested here in the sanctuary uh, for presentation on our journey through Turkey and Greece. Um, following the footsteps of Paul. So it is going to be live streamed and, and recorded, so those who aren't um, available um, here today can still see it, but all are invited to, uh, to spend some time with uh, uh, Mo and I as we explore that. Um, as I have said, just about everything you need um, is in the bulletin that you have in your hand, which is a grand experiment. Some of you have big ones, some of you have small ones. We're really trying to figure out how, how best to equip people who gather to be able to worship engaged. Um, and so, uh, welcome your feedback on its format, and, and we continue to explore that. Um, some other new things you see there is. Um, our candles, um, uh, a bowl of sand with um, candles lit up there. If there is any time in the service, um, like after communion or during the sharing of the peace, that you feel that you would like to light a candle in honor and memory of a prayer that you are sending up, you may feel free. This is not a restricted space. Um, you may wander up here um, as you desire, but that, that is what that is for. Um, speaking of newness, uh, much of our music um, is coming out of, in the season of Lent, um, the All Creation Sings Hymnal Supplement, which is new. Um, and if you're curious about that, there are copies out in the narthex. I commend that to you, um, just to see where all of this music um, is coming from. So we will continue our worship this day with our gathering hymn. That is one piece that is not in your bulletin. It's in that strange red book sitting in front of you. We call it the hymnal. Yes, there it is. Um, you can find it. And we, um, as I say each time, invite you to stand as you are able um, or inclined as we do join together in our gathering hymn number 843, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. Oh. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Let us acknowledge before God and one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings, too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt though you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world that God gave the only Son, so that all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and revives you in the Spirit's power. Amen. Let's join together in our sung prayer for the mercy of God. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your Spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time I'd like to invite the children who are here to come up for a minute, for a little time. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm going to get to my right page here. Where am I going? There we go. Good morning. Well, it seems to me that my pattern um, <laughs> with you all is to always ask the question, so what did you notice different in here today when you came? Yes? <laughs> the quilts, of course. That's the most obvious different here. We have quilts laid out on the pew. Today is National Quilting Day. And so today, we are celebrating the work of those who come here every Wednesday morning and every Friday morning and make these beautiful quilts. And we are about to say a prayer blessing over these quilts because we are about to pack them up and send them away, right? We are going to send them away so that they can be used by people in need. And this might be kind of surprising, right? Because you think of a quilt as going on your bed, 
right? Keeping you warm. Well, there are people all over the world who use quilts for a whole lot more than that, especially people who um, are facing a disaster like an earthquake or, you know, something like that, and, and they need a quilt. It is used not just for your bed. It is used, people use it around the world to, to gather their belongings to carry them, they use it to lay it on the ground so that they can display things that they are selling. They use the quilts to use um, as covers over their head. They use them for all kinds of things. And so today we are going to celebrate the making of these quilts. I'm going to invite Miss Jill to come up and say a little bit about um, who it is here that is making the quilts and what we are doing. Yes, I just wanted to thank um the congregation mainly for their support of our ministry. Um, all, of our, all of our fabric and everything that we use in our quilting room has been donated to us, and we just want to thank you for that. It is a great honor that we also um, are very fortunate that Lutheran World Relief has two warehouses in the United States. One is in Maryland, and the other one is in Minnesota. So we're very fortunate that we can just pack up our quilts and just drive them to New Windsor, which we're going to do on uh, March 29th. Um, a group of us are going to go over there and just deliver the quilts to the warehouse. And then the warehouse, they take the quilts and they pack them up very tightly, and then they are sent overseas. And some of the countries where our quilts from Maryland have been going is Georgia, Jordan, Poland, South Sudan and Ukraine. So all of the work that you do for us is greatly appreciated and we thank you for that. Yes, so thank you all indeed for your support. And thanks to all of those who gather here to put these lovely quilts together. So I would like us all for just a moment to bow our heads in prayer as we say a prayer to God over these quilts. Will you pray with me? Let us pray. Gracious God, you have called us to reach out to our neighbors around the world, and we ask that you would send forth your spirit today as we call upon you to bless the work of our hands and make it holy. We give you thanks for those who have generously shared their resources in order to make these quilts possible. We thank you for the hands that have made and assembled these quilts. May each compassionate touch be known to those who receive them as an expression of your love. We lift up before you all of those working in Lutheran world relief who will distribute these quilts, give them strength and encouragement to do this important work. Finally, God, we pray for our neighbors around the world who will receive these quilts. Neighbors we've never met, neighbors who are far away, neighbors who, like us, wish for your grace and mercy. May these quilts wrap our neighbors in love and fill them with hope and peace found only in you. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, guess what? Oh, we're not done yet, Jeffrey. <laughs> ha ha. Because... It takes a lot more work of Lutheran World Relief to help people around the world. We do quilts, but they do a lot of other things. And so we're going to spend this Lenten time, this Lenten season, in collecting money to help the Lutheran World Relief help people. And we're going to do it in a fun, sort of noisy way. Oh, isn't this nice? Right? Some of you have decorated these cans, and you were wondering what it was for. I have a whole basket of the cans you decorated over there. So we are going to be doing a little noisy jingle jangling for Jesus and Lutheran World Relief between now and Easter. All right? So today, I have given everybody in here a little heads up. I sent them an email and said, if you have any change, bring it to church with you today or next Sunday or the Sunday after, because I'm gonna ask you to collect that change as you are leaving this morning to head upstairs in the upper room for, for your time in children's church. 
All right. So I'm going to let all the adults get ready, start digging in your pockets for any change. And I have a basket over here. And we have cans outside that have been made that you will be invited to take with you and bring back. So every Sunday, we're just going to get some change going here. And we'll start today. So you can pick one of these cans. And as you leave, see if anybody has any change to give you, and then we'll bring it all up at the offering time, all right? All right, thank you for coming up, and good luck. <laughs> Very good. Michael, do you want a can? Already. Thank you for coming up, all right. If you have change, you can raise your hand, and you can go do your collection, and we'll see you back up here at the offering. All right. Yes. Ask who? Oh, sure. Yeah, thanks. That's a great idea. Um, as the uh, children are leaving, that was a great suggestion. Um, those who are here this morning in our midst, who are our quilters that uh, come on Friday? I see. Oh, can you stand so we may uh, give thanks for you? Thank you, thank you. And I can tell you, it is a well-oiled machine up there, but there is room for more. So, um, yes, all are welcome to join in that. So, uh, just now to, uh, yes. There you go. You don't need to know how to sew. So that means I could show up. <laughs> All right. So um, just to pause here, continue to pause to share um, some ministry updates and some announcements uh, before we continue our time of worship with the reading of the word. Um, this last Monday or Tuesday, um, your church council met um, and uh, made a lot of decisions. Um, there was a lot of voting going on. Um, all good. Um, and one of the things we voted on was to appoint um, Debbie Hardy as our new treasurer, who will begin um, in a few weeks um, uh, transitioning from Kristen Dubinsky. So um, we give thanks um, for Debbie for stepping into that role for us. Um, also, the church council um, approved um, the in lease intent for the Mar Maryland Curiosity Lab. So over the last uh, six months, there have been lots of conversations and studies going on about the possibility of bringing to Gloria Day a school. Um, and we have reached the point where it is looking like it might actually be a possibility. Um, and there are still some uh, dots that need to be connected state-wise, county-wise, and Gloria Day-wise, but um, we did make the important step on Tuesday of committing to moving forward. And so for anybody who wants any information about what this means, there is a handout about the Maryland Curiosity Lab. It's um, under the large bulletin board to your right as you leave. This explains everything that has been discussed. And let me tell you, everything is being discussed, insurance and all of this stuff. It is involving some remodeling and some changes in the way we, we live in this building, uh, Monday through Friday to 5. Um, but it is a marvelous opportunity. Sherry Reed has been instrumental um, in um, being the contact person with this process. So uh, I commend that to you. It is a very exciting prospect and possibility um, for making use of this gift that we have of this space. So that was great news. We did address um, the matter of uh, Terrence having moved on from being our director of faith formation. Um, and we are going to spend another this next month um, having conversations with folks in the congregation and among ourselves as to how we're going to proceed. In the meantime, thank you for all of those volunteers who have signed up uh, to spend time with the children in the upper room between now and the end of this school year. There's still some slots available. Again, you don't have to be a parent. You don't have to have a child in your life to have done this. 
It is spending time with the children and resources are available, so um, I commend that opportunity to you. Um, we also um, discussed um, the beginning of what is called the Reconciling in Christ uh, conversation, which we will be having over the course of this next year, which is a very important conversation around um, how we actually are welcoming of the LGBTQ community and of people of different races um, into the life of the congregation. So that will be a very important unfolding conversation, and you'll be hearing more about that in the year to come. Um, so, in terms of announcements, um, we have two Wednesday nights left in Lent. This coming Wednesday and the Wednesday following, uh, there is a soup supper, there are lots of resources, the sanctuary is available, we have a worship service at seven, so I commend all that to you. I lift up to you our Holy Week schedule that is coming up. Had a meeting uh, just yesterday at uh, Manresa, which is now called Celebration Village, um, but it's Manresa and um, the Good Friday Noon Stations of the Cross is back on up there, and it is one of the most uh, powerful, wonderful ways to observe Holy Week. So I commend that to you. Um, I have another number of announcements uh, for the youth. Uh, just to note, the uh, Trampoline Park Day is next Sunday. Um, Youth are invited to sing with Carrie um, after worship. They're going to be meeting upstairs today because of the presentation in here. We're still looking at these two mission trips, trying to discern which of the two, if both or neither, are going to work for us. So I commend those dates to you. I do want to lift up. Um, I received um, this guide in the uh, Severna Park Voice. It is a camp guide for this summer for all those who have children looking for camps. I want to lift up our uh, Lutheran Bible camp, Marlu Ridge. Um, it's an hour and a half away, and they are having a day uh, where you can go and explore. And information's in the bulletin, it's on page 18, but it's April 16th, it's a Sunday. It's the Sunday after Easter, you can go up there with your family or by yourself and just spend a beautiful day on Marlu Ridge and learn about camping opportunities for children in the year to come as well. Um, lifting up also our Easter egg hunt. Uh, the youth are putting that on for the community. There's signs out, notice in the bulletin. Uh, so want to lift that up for you. All right. Otherwise, um, out in the narthex, there's information about the trip to El Salvador that is being planned for this summer. I, you, there's a little pamphlet out there for you. Really want to lift that up as a mission opportunity for us to share in together. Um, uh, we have an annual f uh, flower sale that benefits um, our um, property committee. So if you're planting any flowers this spring, that is happening. Uh, the order form is out in the narthex. And um, I'm going to wrap up by saying our Synod Assembly is coming up. That is a time um, in which people throughout our Delaware, Maryland Synod gather as church to find out what the Holy Spirit is up to um, out here in the Delaware, Maryland Synod and in the congregation. So if you would like to serve um, as a voting member representing Gloria Day and experiencing that, please speak to me. Council will be voting next month on those voting members. So. That is that. That seems like a lot. I'm sorry for all of that, but it's a busy place. There's a lot going on. So um, that being said, I would now invite you to take a moment to resettle your heart and your spirit as we prepare to hear the reading of God's word. The first reading is from 1 Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, 
Do you come peaceably? He said, peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and he had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the God, word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalmody this morning is from Psalm 23 and is read responsively. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. The second reading this morning is from Ephesians. Once you were in darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, sleeper, awake. Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Word of God, word of life. Please stand as you are. Given its length, I invite you to be seated for the reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, 
this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is not this the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus, made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and you are trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And he answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, 
I believe. And he worshiped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear family and faith, grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and our loving Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, I'm going to say I'm totally thankful that we have the 23rd Psalm appointed for our readings for today. Hmm? Um, appointed a long time ago, and I'm not quite sure why it was appointed for today, but I'm thinking maybe it was a bone thrown to pastors dealing with this gospel reading that maybe we can just hang on the 23rd Psalm. Um, and that second reading from Ephesians, with all of its lightness is good and darkness is bad imagery, not always helpful, especially in a country dealing with so much racism. Uh, speaking of which, I commend to you once again, uh, God's Holy Darkness. Beautiful book, a beautiful book. It's out on the red music stand just as you walk out the door. Um, a beautiful children's book that helps rescue darkness from the one-sided perspective of being bad and celebrating all of the glorious holinesses of some darkness. But with regard to our gospel reading today, I struggle mightily with all of this blindness and, well, I'll get there. Most of the time, uh, the traditional approach to this whole story as almost comical as it might seem, is to understand um, it being a story about spiritual blindness, of the Pharisees, you know, leading to sermons written about our own spiritual blindness and what that might look like. And um, I say that that interpretation I have, I've gone down, I've preached, and it's in our hymn of the day today. But I struggle mostly with this whole sentence that Jesus uttered himself, saying, this man was born blind so that, so that God's works might be revealed in him. That to me sounds dangerous. That to me sounds problematic. That to me sounds like whatever we perceive as a negative in our life is put there by God so that God can do good things. No. No, no, no. So what then to do with this story? And in my reading around, I thankfully found help from one pastor. His name is Duane Steele. He's the pastor emeritus of Gladesboro Evangelical Lutheran Church in Hillsville, Virginia, where he served for 32 years. And he too, like the man in our story, has been blind from birth. And from his perspective, all of the interpretations I've described that people have used in this story run the risk of using the man's story as if he were simply a symbolic object instead of a real person, a case, an issue. That's what I was feeling. And he wrote, some preachers interpret this to mean the man was born blind so Jesus could come along and perform a miracle for all of us to see. An interpretation that robs the man of his humanity and reduces him to a prop. Even the use of the word healing to describe this miracle can imply that there was something originally wrong and broken about this man with his blindness which seems to be the opposite of what Jesus was actually saying. And this is where I found Pastor Steele to be so helpful. He wrote, although it's true that some people do not enjoy being blind, and I have to admit I myself find it annoying when it prevents me from doing useful things like driving a car, still, Jesus makes it clear 
that blindness does not prevent me from doing God's work. For many of us who experience blindness, the word healing means a lifelong process of living out our vocation, despite the many of the same prevailing misconceptions even the man in the story faced. Healing, he said, happens when we are loved and welcomed, when what we think or say or do matters. And after reading that, I thought, wow. Amongst all the things this story could be about, what if it really is about identity? Our identity. How we understand our identity. How we understand the identity of others. Something that seemed even more plausible when I read again that first verse, which says, if you remember, Jesus was walking along. He saw a man blind from birth. He didn't see a blind man. He saw a man who happened to be blind. John, the gospel writer, identifies him by his humanity before his blindness. And what if we were to do that? Consciously, intentionally, every day when it comes to others, especially others who are different from us who, or who we might not like very much or who we might be afraid of, who we are angry with? How might the world be changed if we regarded each other's humanness before anything else? And putting it in the language of faith, regarding every single person, whether in person or in the media or on Facebook, first as a child, beloved child of God. In the words again of Pastor Steele, as we approach another Holy Week journey through Christ's crucifixion and resurrection, we're summoned to recognize that in God's kingdom, we bear no labels, except for the label of beloved child of God in all of our fullness, in any other identities with which we might claim or have laid upon us. As Paul writes in Galatians 3.28, in Christ, there is no Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female. And in today's story, maybe we would say there is no blind or sighted, disabled or normal. All of God's children are called to live lives of discipleship. However one looks, whatever one's abilities, however one identifies. Of course, it's likely the case we'll only be able to regard others as beloved children of God, if that is how we regard our identity. So do you? Do you first identify, first and foremost, as a beloved child of God? In this Lenten season, this springtime for the soul, perhaps it's time to do some reordering. Hmm? What things shape your identity, your understanding of your identity, and what might need to get behind your identity as a beloved child of God? Hmm? Have you understood yourself primarily in terms of tragedy you've experienced in your life or the challenges or the limitations you face? What needs to get behind your identity as a child of God? How might that baptismal identity replace some of the other names or labels you've put on yourself or have been put on you? Jesus' cross reminds us that the hurts, the sorrows, the struggles, the regrets that have marked us and that have been labeled upon us may describe us, but they do not define us. We are defined by our identity as God's beloved children. And so, family and faith, my prayer this day is however you see yourselves, however you identify, it would be through the eyes of our Creator who looks upon our hearts and who says to you and to all, you are my beloved with whom I am well pleased, for which we may indeed say, Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we join together in our hymn of the day.
I will sing the first verse since it is a new hymn, but I invite you to join on two through four. Let my spirit always sing, though my heart be wintering, though the season of despair give no sign that you are there, God to whom my days be. Let there always be a song. Nor my body be confined. Let your word engage my mind. Let the Now, by the power of the Holy Spirit at work within us, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Amen. You may be seated as we prepare for our time of intercessory prayer. I commend to you our congregational prayer list um, that is printed in your bulletin, uh, just to name some updates um, that we have. Uh, Bob White is in the hospital again uh, with a fever, um, but that is being treated, and so we will continue to hold Bob in prayer, as well as Dolly, um, who is recovering from her knee surgery. Watching, so hello, Bob and Dolly. We are holding you in prayer um, this morning. Um, Continuing to hold in prayer, Alan Waple, as he continues um, in rehabilitation and um, longing for discernment around what his problems are. Um, uh, Tom McDaniel um, has asked that we hold uh, his family in prayer um, as his um, aunt Polly has received a cancer diagnosis, and they have um, some uh, family friends um, the Adams family, they have a seven-year-old who's been diagnosed with cancer, so holding the Adams family in prayer, holding those folks in prayer for healing. 
Um, and of course, in our community of faith this week, um, we have faced uh, Mary O'Connor's mother, Therese, passed away in prayer, um, especially her sister, Carmel, and niece, Kara, as they grieve his loss. So those were the updates I had for the prayer requests. I would invite you to stand as we prepare our hearts for prayer. Come, bring your burdens to Come, bring your burdens to God. For Jesus will never say no. Come, bring your burdens to God. Come, bring your burdens to God. Come, bring your burdens to God. For Jesus will never say no. Eternal God, you seal us by the Holy Spirit and mark us with the cross of Christ forever. Inspire us by your love, as together we strive for justice and peace in all the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Holy God, continue to bless your church on earth so that as children of light, we, and in particular as Gloria Day, through the Delaware, Maryland Synod and ELCA and Lutheran World Relief, might shine brightly in a world that longs to know you. Renew our bishops, Elizabeth and Bill, and all pastors and all people in your church that we might not only know you, but share you in new ways. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Powerful God, you anoint kings and establish rulers. Guide with your wisdom the work of heads of states and elected leaders, especially our Senator Guile and our whole Maryland State Congress. Encourage them to lead in care for all, especially the vulnerable among us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Shepherding God, you lead us beside still waters and restore our souls. Keep watch over those who weep, comfort those who grieve, tend to all who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. We lift up especially this day Bob and Alan, Polly and the Adams family, Hillary and John. We lift up the family and friends of Dee and Therese and Doug, especially Carmel and Cara. And we remember all those on our congregational prayer list and others known to each of us to be in any sort of need, whom we now name before you in the silence of our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew our whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And I invite you to share a word and sign of God's peace with one another. Peace. And you may be seated as we receive our morning offering and a word of appreciation, um, especially to those viewing online uh, for providing your offering through all of the electronic methods that are available. Um, also available to those here as well uh, through our QR code. Uh, thank you for your generosity.
Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is sure. Word and water, bread and wine, these are signs of your abundant grace. Receive the gifts we bring and nourish us to proclaim your abiding love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and song. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and God of might, heaven and earth. Uh-huh. 
night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Some words of invitation and instruction for communion are printed in the bulletin. Uh, just to emphasize here at Gloria Day, all are truly welcome wherever you are in your journey of faith and life. Jesus invites you to taste and see the goodness of the Lord. And I'll invite the communion servers to come forward.
please stand as you are able. And now may the body and blood of our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Embodied God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. We sing together our sending hymn, Lead Me, Guide Me, and we will sing verses 1 and 3. bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you. 